Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. And Soul Man, it's a movie that exists. Tapes with talk, talking, talk, talking, talking about tapes. Hello, Manny. How are you today? I'm doing great, Tony. <laughs> it's nice to see. Oh, do you have something there, Manny? Uh, yeah. Well, it's a great honor to be on your show. People have been telling me I need to get on Kill Tony for a very long time. No, this is. The, I'm not Kill Tony. This is Hack the Movies, talking uh, about tapes, Hack the Movies. Well, either way, I'm excited to do, to do Kill Tony today, <laughs> and I've got a gift for you. Oh, okay. Since we're reviewing Soul Man. Oh, okay. What is this? All right. <laughs> you seem to be giving me shoe polish. Yes. I I, I don't know what for. Uh, my shoes look fine. What other reason would you be giving me shoe polish? I don't know. I figured a fine Italian gentleman like yourself just <laughs> needed to keep his shoes the proper color. It's the only reason I would need. God damn it. We're not even, we're not even a minute into the episode. You couldn't even give it a minute. <laughs> Man, well, I love Kill Tony. And <laughs> I know offensive kill... humor. <laughs> this is not Kill Tony. <laughs> By the way, Manny, could you introduce yourself? <laughs> Properly introduce yourself. Yes. If they haven't turned off the episode already. I mean, it was already a stretch getting them to watch a Soul Man review, but I think you might have stopped it. Also, is this your drink? What's it doing all the way over here? <laughs> okay. Introduce yourself. I, I'm Manny Muskets, uh, one half of the Man Pad podcast. Great podcast. And local Philadelphia comedian. So if you need your yuck yucks, Hit me up. Yes, Manny is a great comedian. I introduced him on stage, not really knowing who he was. And then he said the Edward about 20 times. And afterwards, I'm like, shit, I really wish there wasn't footage of me introducing this guy. And then, and then as I got drunker that night, I was like, you know, that guy would be really good on my show. Well, that's why Tony's my... <laughs> okay, you okay. that out, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to bleep that out. It was with an A? I mean, is that okay? <laughs> hey, I can say it with an R if you'd like Kill Tony. I hope you're all having a great Black History Month. Now, anyway, Soul Man. What a film. Uh, this is a real movie. Yeah, it's the autobiography of <laughs> the Sricada. Jesus Christ. Nobody Google that. God damn it. Remind me to delete all the pictures I've taken with him at live events. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why well, are you ashamed of this retainer? <laughs> Great lawyer. So Soul Man is directed by Steve Miner. Uh, I've actually covered a couple Steve Miner films on this show. Uh, we did Lake Placid, the one about the, the giant alligator or crocodile. You ever see that one? No, I don't watch Miner movies. No, Steve Miner, like M-I-N-E-R. Oh, he did a couple Friday the 13th. He did Halloween H2O. Uh, he, yeah, so he's kind of known to be a horror guy, but he also, you know, dipped his feet into comedy, as we can see here. Well, horror and comedy have a lot of overlap. Of course, of and course. I think Soul Man <laughs> exemplifies that. <laughs> um... Look, I don't know who's really to blame for this. Uh, I will say a woman wrote this script. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it shows. Uh, I believe it was a white woman also. <laughs> uh, yeah, this film, it came out of the 80s. 1986. Yes. Now, a lot of times you go back and you look at these movies. And a lot of times people go, couldn't make that movie today. Oh, that wouldn't go today. I know people say that about Blazing Saddles, even though Blazing Saddles is great. Uh, people say that about... Joanna Man, even though Joanna Man is great. Uh, Didn't they just make that movie last week or <laughs> last month? Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, the Daily Wire tried to, like, do their version of Joanna Man. But, like, the the people who bitch about people putting their politics, they put, like, the movie's just their politics. Like, where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? Joanna Man had jokes. Anyway, so, yeah, there's a lot of t people that are like, oh, you couldn't do this today. But if you look up the reviews <laughs> and criticisms of this movie at the time, People had a problem with this movie at the time. This was never... I'm sure a lot of people love it. I kind of like some of it. 
But this wasn't like it came out and everyone went, oh, this is totally fine. Well, honestly, I watched it. A, you could have made it today. But I don't think they'd be as tasteful about it today either. <laughs> I think it would be way more over the top. They might do something different with his lips. <laughs> okay, yeah. So it stars C. Thomas Howe, uh, who was in a bunch of films. Uh, at this point, he was like in E.T. He wasn't like one of the main kids. He's like one of the bike kids in okay. E.T. Uh, this was kind of like his like big solo thing, I think. Um yeah, and it's about a guy. Oh, uh, wait, I saw Julia Dreyfus was in this. Julia Louis Dreyfus is in this. We actually uh, we reviewed Troll Two recently, and I mentioned that she's in Troll One. She was in a lot of weird eighties movies. Wait, so that's Elaine from Seinfeld, right? Yes, it is. Is she related to Richard Dreyfus? I don't believe so. Okay, I only know who Richard Dreyfus is because of Come Town. <laughs> not not even Jaws. Not even Jaws. I don't watch movies about blowjobs i don't know <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being on my movie review show get a little closer to that mic You're welcome, um, <laughs> yes so uh yeah it's about c thomas Hale's character and uh it's about a white guy pretending to be black now there's a lot of like gender swap comedies yeah. uh what is there like late i said juana man ladybugs she's the man there's not a lot of well i mean i guess there used to be many many years ago but there's not a lot of race swap comedies However, a few years ago, there was one that did both. LaQuisha, which I still haven't seen. Did you see the trailers for LaQuisha? No. It's about a white guy. He just gives really, really good advice, but he can't get a job on the radio. So he pretends he does everything remotely, and he pretends to be a black woman, and he does a black woman accent. <laughs> so that's like, uh, what's the movie with, uh, it's like Thank You for Calling or something. It's got the guy who was in Atlanta. The Nigerian dude. Oh, and, uh, sorry for bothering you or sorry, something like that. Yeah. 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 Have you seen that one? I've not. We should review that. We and should. Speaking of backlash to this movie, I saw Spike Lee wasn't happy with it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I checked out a few reviews. I saw Siskel and Ebert's where they said they were okay with like the first half, but the second half falls off. But Gene Siskel was like, he doesn't, and this is a big problem with the movie. He doesn't look like a black guy. He looks like he has a tan. What did Spike Lee say? Well, Spike Lee was like, uh, he does look black and all the black people must be idiots or whatever. I I don't know, but I watched a video. I I was half asleep. I was reading <laughs> the comments on the video, though. Yeah. And they're like, Spike Lee addressed all his criticisms in Bamboozled. Oh, uh, okay. I've Rich, never seen Bamboozled. I think we should review it together. We should. We should. <laughs> You know, we can review movies that aren't just about black people. I just want to let you know that. When are we doing Cell Block 4? <laughs> Literally, I asked him, like, what movies he wants to review. They're all black movies. I'm like, okay, they don't all have to be that. Okay. Pootie Tang is my favorite. <laughs> Pootie Tang is pretty good. No, I'll give you Pootie Tang's really <laughs> fucking good. Um, okay. Uh, Manny. Yes. Would you do us the honors of reading the back of the box? Oh, yeah. Let's see. All right. Mark Watson is going to Harvard Law School on the prestigious Bouchard Fellowship for an outstanding black student. There's one small problem. Mark Watson is white. Brother is he in for an education. <laughs> Mark is desperate to get into Harvard. Just desperate enough to swallow a handful of experimental tanning pills. I like experimental drugs myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the fun begins. <laughs> also when the fun begins for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tootsie and trading places all rolled into one hilarious masquerade romp. Instantly black, Mark finds himself seduced by an Upper crust white co ed, mm -hmm. jailed without reason, shunned by a beautiful black student, Ray Dong Chong. Yeah, Ray Dong Chong. That is an Asian name. Keep reading, keep reading. <laughs> and the butt of an obnoxious pranksters. Oh, the butt of obnoxious pranksters. Mark Shu is on the other foot, and he's in for a lesson. He will not soon forget. Ray Don Chong is Tommy Chong's daughter. <clears throat> Tommy like uh, from Barton? No, Cheech and Chong, Tommy. Oh. You ain't got no job, Tommy. 
Anyway, uh, thank you for reading that. Uh, yeah, let's go through this movie here. Now we got the little brief synopsis. Uh, okay. It opens up. We do meet Mark. Yeah. He's, he's waking up to some blues music. I got the John the Conqueror. He's a very cultured individual, I think. And uh, he's just got a random woman in his bed. Yeah, well, what I liked about the opening scene is it's, he was, like, throwing a baseball at the alarm clock or something. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. It was, like, super 80s. Yeah. And I actually wrote this down. It mm-hmm. was uh, Ferris Bueller's Day of Blackface. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. I will say, yeah, there's a lot of like moments and gags that I've seen in this movie that I've seen in a bunch of other movies and like TV shows and sitcoms. Um, his uh, buddy Gordon walks in. Yeah, I like how Gordon had he instantly walked in and yeah. he like talked to bot, butt naked, best yeah. friends, whole conversation, and then the woman has like two lines yeah because they don't know who she is yeah it uh, it was uh like congratulations march or something yeah all i know is she had two too many words and <laughs> two too few tits well that's your opinion <laughs> but yeah the reason gordon breaks in is because um they both got their acceptance letters and they find out that they're both accepted into harvard law school hell yeah oh yeah that's my um, alma mater. Huh? That's my alma mater. Oh, is it really? No. <laughs> it's in Boston, right? Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to be up there. All colleges in Boston. I'm going to be up there the month this comes out. Oh, nice. Maybe I'll do a soul band tour. I'll go to all the soul band locations. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> Tell me how the jail cell is. <laughs> this is the jail cell from Soul Man. <laughs> I'll bring my shoe polish. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that night they go out and party. Julia Louis Dreyfus is there. I, I forget who she plays, like Lisa or something. I don't know Elaine. <laughs> she plays Elaine in Seinfeld. I mean, this movie. Uh, her boy and her boyfriend Brad's there. They're talking about how they're gonna get in. Uh, then their stoner friend Seth shows up, and he talks about these new tanning pills he's working on. <laughs> um. This is set up for later, and Mark's excited. He's got his whole life ahead of him. It's going to be great. He talks to his dad, who's working out on a weird-ass machine. Yes, yeah, one of those invert tables, I Yeah. Think. Like, f- f- if you need to stretch your back. Yeah. But he's doing, like, sit-ups, like, in the free yeah. head video. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Mark's dad decides, hey, he's like, hey, I've been talking to my therapist, and uh, I've given you a lot, son. Given you a lot in life. It's time you do something for yourself. I want you to pay your way through college. And he's like, oh, no. So So he wants to kill himself. (laughs) That scene really resonated with me. Okay. Because I had the exact same conversation with my dad growing up. For Manny Musket's biography moment here. Okay. I was born in London, England. Oh, over there. Foggy London Town? Yeah. The place with Universal College or whatever. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, I didn't know I was supposed to be saving for college your whole life. (laughs) You better figure out a scholarship. (laughs) That was like sophomore year of high school. And I was like, I didn't know I was supposed to be (laughs) doing scholarship. How long did you live in London? Until I was like seven, oh. almost seven. So that explains the accent. Uh, that plus autism plus <laughs> nasal issues. <laughs> I didn't say it explained it completely. I was part piece of the puzzle was filled in. Thanks for filling in the rest, man. There's puzzles. <laughs> so, Mark, goddamn you. <laughs> so. Oh, oh wait, wait. Do, I, do, do you know what he spent the college fund on? Oh yes, it was a um, it was like a house in uh, Aruba or something. It was a timeshare. Oh yeah, timeshare. Yeah, like, isn't the whole point of that that they're cheap? <laughs> yeah, although they are kind of annoying because you well, kind I mean, of they're a scam. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're a scam that like white trash can afford. Yes, yes. My family has a timeshare, but anyway. <laughs> 
I love you, Kill Tony. <laughs> I'm not Kill Tony. <laughs> I'm not Kill Tony. I don't even listen to that show because I don't like the name because I think it's very antagonistic toward me. I hear it's very good, though. Well, I, I did hear Ric Flair on Kill Tony. And that was super cringe. But we got to get back into Soul Man. Oh, yeah. I don't know why you keep derailing. We got to talk about Soul Man. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he wants to kill himself. Uh, he looks up a list of scholarships and they're all for women, Ukrainians. And black people, he can't get a scholarship to save his life. Yeah, uh, and he uh, to be white. Yes, he can't get financial aid because his parents make too much money, even though they are not giving him the money. I do like this scene where he goes to apply for a loan, and Gordon starts like tapping his back, and the the tapping it transitions to like the 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 receipt printing. <laughs> Like his financial records, and he like he missed a bunch of payments and everything. Yeah. Who'd have thought that rich kids like can't be responsible with their money <laughs> or their lives <laughs> <laughs> or or their pill intake? <laughs> I tried to. I had to get a loan years ago to buy my car, and my credit was like really bad. So like I got the loan, but they're like we're putting a device in your car that will deactivate. It if you miss a payment, I never missed a payment. I paid that baby off. <laughs> now it's now it's really on its last legs. Anyway, um, so yeah, he was, isn't able to get that. I like that he begs his father's therapist to change the advice he gave him, and then it turns out the father's therapist hates his own son. <laughs> so now he's making just all his male clients hate their son. I like that they're all wearing tracksuits. <laughs> A, a therapist with issues of their own. Yes. <laughs> what, such a outlandish comedy this is. Yes, I mean, totally, <laughs> totally not realistic at all. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the next day, Gordon's going for a jog. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just noticed you fake smoking a cigar. He's going for a jog, and I, I can't believe it. There's this just random black man. Do you say black or African American? What are we supposed to say now? <laughs> I go with black. I'm gonna go with black. Do you edit these yourself? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, a lot of times it's me. Sometimes I do give them to Jess from the Creep Off to edit. So, yeah. Jess, Thank if you're you. editing this one, I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway. This random black man is following Gordon, but it turns out it's really Mark and Gordon shocked and he almost dies. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Mark tells him his plan. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get the Bouchard scholarship. Uh, I do like that thing where it's him, like getting the scholarship with all the people. Um, and I like that Gordon's just like, Hey buddy, like you might've taken a scholarship from someone else. He's like, Nope. There was no one in L.A. that applied for it. I'm the one that got it. Well, before I watched the movie, I was really curious how he knew that he was going to be the quote-unquote most qualified. Yeah. Because I'm like, he didn't seem like no. uh, who, Stephen Hawking. Is that still going to be about <laughs> uh, You know what? Like a few months ago. That would have been a good name to pull. Uh, let's, let's say Einstein. I think he's fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he, he did a bad moment. I was trying really hard to think of a black genius. <laughs> All I came up with Kanye. He didn't seem like the Kanye <laughs> of academics. <laughs> Happy Black History Month. Anyway, yes, well, I they, I think that was like, they had to be like, no one else qualified. Because the movie's like, we can't say he was smarter than all of them. That's going to get us in more trouble than the movie probably already got them. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's the oh, only one who got it. A great line from uh, that intro where he yeah. was chasing him. He says, it's the Cosby decade. <laughs> America loves black people. Ooh. Oh, Cosby. So then Soul Man starts playing and they show up in Harvard. 
and he's fooling everyone with his disguise. And again, I can't stress enough, he does not look black. He doesn't, it's not as bad as Justin Trudeau's blackface. That's probably the worst. It is very similar. Though. Yeah, it is very similar. Yeah. <laughs> they they use different hair relaxing products. But yeah. <laughs> Remember he painted his tongue black? It's like, Justin Trudeau, have you not like seen black people? Like, what is, what is your problem? I just want you to know, when I played Aladdin, I didn't use blackface. Well, I mean... I'm better than Justin Trudeau, and I want you to say that I'm better than Justin Trudeau. I really hope you enjoy my gift. <laughs> what does that have to do with blackface? This is shoe <laughs> polish for my shoes. <laughs> so <laughs> they're in Harvard. <laughs> He's full of everyone. The landlord, Irish guy, is very upset. That Mark is a, quote, black Negro. And I do like Gordon's like, oh, my God, he never told me. <laughs> it was true. Uh, wait, the, when, when they show uh, the intro to Harvard, or, yeah. but there's one scene with these two guys, and they ask an in interesting question. I want to know. If, oh, wait, 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 no, that's coming up. That's coming okay. up. That's coming up. That's coming up. I wrote down all the questions those guys asked. Okay, yeah, we're, we're getting that. We're getting that. Uh, but yeah, so during this uh, scene where they move in, landlord's not happy. The yeah. building is owned by Leslie Nielsen, who until the other day when I rewatched this, spoiler, I don't watch this movie a lot, Manny, but when I was rewatching it, I was like, oh my God, Leslie Nielsen's in it. And his daughter is Jan from The Office, oh. who was a nice looking lady, but I didn't realize how fucking hot she was in the 80s. Anyway, uh, that's his daughter, Whitney, and I forget what his okay. name is. We'll just call him Leslie Nielsen. Uh, so the landlord lets him know that a black Negro is in the building, and he's like, all right, look for anything you can to evict him. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so now he's got that. That's like a ticking time bomb. They're going to look for reasons to kick him out. Uh, then they go to a party, like this whole introduction party at Harvard, and he meets two, two white guys. Telling black jokes. Now, what are the questions they ask, Manny? Um, oh, no, I am blind. Oh, what do you call it? What do you call one white guy surrounded by 10 black guys? Well, I know the answer in the movie. It's apparently well, a court. What, do, what would you go f with? Me? I, I don't know. Uh, the tracker in a game of... Dirty cracker or jizzy cracker? What, what, soggy, soggy biscuit. The, the, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you know what? The I, answer. I, I write my own jokes. I'm not good at punching up other people's the, jokes. The answer in the movie is a quarterback, right? <laughs> yes. Do you want to read their second question? I'll read it when it comes up. Well, I mean, they they ask. They do two jokes. Oh well, I it's uh, what do you call one. one guy with like either like a hundred or a thousand black guys? What what do you call that? I mean, I wouldn't call it anything. The characters in this movie say it's a warden. <laughs> I must have been too busy laughing at the first. Part. <laughs> so you were laughing, okay? Yeah, because then Mark walks by and they're like, "Hey, uh, no offense," and Mark's like, "Yeah, no problem." Because he's white, why would he be offended? I I will say this. Look, look. I don't want to. I don't want to give away any white secrets. But Manny, I'll let you know that like white guys, uh, they really like telling black jokes. But I want to assure you, they space them out a little bit. Uh, these two characters throughout the whole film, it seems like they only exist. I don't even think they're going to Harvard. I think they're just walking around coming up with black jokes. And I'm just like, no, they, I mean, you have like, can you throw like a joke about like women or something in there? Like, that's actually one of my favorite things about white people Yeah, is you can always ask them for a racist joke and they always have an answer for you. Unfortunately, I don't. I, I'm actually not racist, Manny. And mm. the movie spoiled all the ones I know. How, uh, how do you starve a black... Then Mark meets Ray Don Chung's character, Sarah. <laughs> um, and he's really into her. 
and she tells him to join the uh oh god what was it it was like some black student uh organization the next day it turns uh mark starts classes and it turns out that his professor is a brother yeah mufasa mufasa which who of course is hit, hit the hit the button oh no it's on his chest no up it's sorry it wasn't done it's james earl jones i couldn't believe that he was in this and agreed to be in this that seems very weird neither could spike lee (laughs) i think once you hit the button it's a little motion sensitive can you just face it that way maybe all right you don't Sorry. need to know the shame of what we're about to do. <laughs> it's just, I hope it doesn't keep talking the whole time. So uh, he goes into his class and the professor is strict about deadlines. No exceptions. That's my James Earl Jones voice. Yeah, he said uh, no turn to get assignments on CP time. I know that one from <laughs> Reno 911. <laughs> Um, yeah, I and mean, this we'll, we'll find out. He's very strict about it. Dude, I had a black professor that was like this. He was like, dude, I had to get my appendix taken out. Ooh. Like the first week of a semester. So like I missed everything. Uh, and he was like ready to fail me because I missed everything. I'm like, yeah, but I I was us uh, I, I wasn't awake. I couldn't move. Um, I'm sorry I didn't think to hit you up. And I like I had to go like the whole office. I'm like, hey, can you get me out of this class? This guy's being a real dick to me. But yeah, I'm like, no, I'm like, literally, they took an organ out of my body and I had to recover. I'm sorry I wasn't thinking of English history or whatever the fuck class it was. <sighs> Do you accept uh late stuff? Uh I mean not late pre- periods, but <laughs> anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagine James Earl Jones saying that to a lady. <laughs> Your period best better not to be late. Must be promptly on time every month. <laughs> There's a reason it's called a menstrual cycle. <laughs> <laughs> so um There's a great disturbance in the force. <laughs> so yeah, Mark uh he finds out he's gonna join the BLSA. Uh, and Gordon lets him know that it is a quote militant group. So I don't know how he already had these clothes. Cut to Mark, black like a uh, turtleneck, camo pants, beret, looking like a Black Panther. And he, I do love that shot where he like walks into the room and they're all just like dirty looking black yeah. dudes. And he just feels really out of place. And then he comes back and he's just like militant. He's like, oh yeah, you believe me. <laughs> also. This scene was weird. Mark Mark unpeels a banana, starts eating it, gives it to Gordon, who then dips it in his coffee and then eats it himself. I don't understand what was happening there. That's just a college diet. I was in college, and I don't remember dipping bananas into coffee. I remember eating a lot of Chinese food because I, I lived between a Chinese food place and a liquor store. Manny, if you're wondering how I gained a lot of weight, it's because I was dating a lot of women and I lived between a Chinese food place and a liquor store. Well, I mean, I didn't know that you grew up in the hood. It was just college. I, grew up in no- North. I didn't know that you went to college in the hood. <laughs> well, one when year. You sold Chinese food and liquor stores. Was there, <laughs> was there bulletproof glass in the Chinese store? Yes, there was. No, it was one of those you have to like walk in, it's like centered off. Yeah, 100%. There was bulletproof glass. All right, all right, so... I didn't go to college in Harvard. I went to college in Texas A&M. Oh. So it's where I learned uh, the food stamps joke. <laughs> 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 and being the only black person there. Oh. W- w- I remember one of the blackest things about me that yeah. no one else could understand was I ate beans on toast one time. <laughs> They're like, that is the most hood thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I've 
I've never heard of that. It, it's a very English breakfast. <laughs> okay, all right. A black English breakfast or an American or a white English breakfast? <laughs> if I go to foggy London town and I go, give me your best toast bean. Uh, <laughs> they will get, they will serve you beans on toast. If if you're a big spender, you'll get a sausage on the side. And the guys in Texas thought this was like a hood thing. <laughs> One time I was at the like I one time I was at the grocery store buying beans and <laughs> bread and like some popsicles and the cashier asked me, Have you ever been to jail? <laughs> what was the answer? You don't have to say. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um yes, yeah, so uh he got embarrassed by that. Uh, Leslie Nielsen really wants to make sure Whitney stays away from Mark. Uh, cause I think he caught her like talking to him or whatever. So then Mark has to play basketball. Yes. And speaking of jam being from the office, this reminds me of that office <laughs> episode where Michael Scott's like, uh, who's the black guy? Stanley's like, Oh, Stanley, you're on my team. Of course. He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> and like Stanley's like the only bad ball player. But yeah. So like the two teams are fighting over Mark being on their team. <laughs> And, like, I love how they're both let down because he's terrible. Like, they show everyone else is, like, making the baskets. The other black guy's good. He can't even get, like, the water in his face, right? He's missing everything. I like how there was one other black guy on the team who was actually good. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, come on, guys. <laughs> How'd he get into Harvard? <laughs> And by the way, this is an offensive stereotype. Yeah. Are you good at basketball? <laughs> I mean, you see how blind I am reading my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm Italian. I'm, I'm, I'm not good at soccer. Yeah. Like, these, these are all stereotypes. I, okay. I, I learned jokes for a reason. <laughs> L- let's say when dad told me I had to get a scholarship. <laughs> 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 okay. So the uh professor is grilling the class about a question. Sarah is the only one that gets it right. She's not too thrilled with Mark after the whole militant thing. Um are they still around Black Panthers or is there like a new un- incarnation of them? Why are you asking me? <laughs> I would ask anyone who was here. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they don't send me any emails anymore, but we we do need them. I think now, (laughs) (laughs) I I think that died out with like the last generation of rappers, like when most most deaf stopped releasing CDs. (laughs) I think when, um, what was it? I think Sam Jackson was a member and then I think he got like shot or something. He's like, you know what? I'm going to be an actor instead. (laughs) Like it's probably a lot easier. Anyway, um, fucker, call me out. Um, where are we here? Okay. Uh, okay, so he's just like, hey, let's meet Friday night to study. Well, he's shocked by that, but she's like, I'm really serious about studying. She's very serious about her studies, and we find out why in a little bit. Uh, and he's like, all right, it's a date. And she's like, it's not a date. Um, I've had that experience. Yeah, really? <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> let's go out, it's a date, and then I'm like, what is your boyfriend doing here? Oh, my <laughs> God! <laughs> okay, so this scene. Yes. This is probably one of the more problematic scenes of the movie. They bump into Lisa and Brad in the hallway. Oh, yeah. And, oh, there's Mark in blackface, so they put sunglasses on him. And then I like that he pretends to be Ray Charles, and they're like, oh, hold on, I have sunglasses. He's just like, and they're like, is he deaf? And they, I like that. I like that Gordon's always fucking with him. And he goes, no, he's just dumb. <laughs> they're like, oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, he tells him that his name is Kareem Abdul. And then he's like, oh, uh, Ali. Kareem. Kareem Abdul Ali. Uh, and they believe it. <laughs> so they're from California. Yeah, I uh, there's black people there. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if I'm spoiling anything. I mean, which part of California? I mean, there, there's black people everywhere. Okay, 
I, I can't. They're in my heart all the time because I love the community so much. And also, I'm Italian. That's like the same thing. But like, they, like that's the weird thing. Like they're being tricked. Like I can see if this is like people who've never seen a black person before. But like, no, you've definitely seen black people before. They're probably all over the college. We know they're all over the college. Like, why are you being tricked by this? And, and they knew Mark. Like, I would, like... Out of all the people to be tricked by his costume. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it took Gordon, like, a second, but he figured it out. <laughs> um. So, yeah, they, they believe it. They think nothing of it. Yeah. Uh, Mark helps Whitney with her shower and she tells him that she's writing her paper on the civil rights movement and he's a big fan of the civil rights movement. Cut to they just had sex. Hell yeah. Yes. Um, and apparently it was good too because the picture on the wall is all off. They're on the floor now. Um, <laughs> That's exactly what I thought college would be like for me. Because, I mean, there wasn't any other black people in AM. and I figure <laughs> lots of white girls wanted to make their daddies mad. Yeah. But then I realized my only competition was all athletes. Because <laughs> every other black man at the school was on there on a basketball scholarship, <laughs> football scholarship. <laughs> But yes, you couldn't you couldn't compete. You couldn't compete. Yeah. So when they're like, oh yeah, I'm interested in Batman. <laughs> I was just invisible to everyone. <laughs> Cause if you weren't into black guys, it's like... I remember my, my roommate was so into this one girl and she was dating like a black guy on the temple football team. And he's just like, Man, I can totally get that girl. Fuck that guy. And he's like so like our at our house, uh, like our roommates are like, well, let's look up the team. Let's see what the guy looks like. And he saw what the guy, the guy's arm was. He went like immediately right there. He went, oh fuck that! No, that guy will crush my head in his body. He's like, I'm, I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me touch the girls back in Delaware. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, we're good. We're fine. <laughs> like he, he stopped trying to hook up with her. He saw the picture. The guy's like, oh no, that guy will kill me. He's on the football team. He's giant. <laughs> Um, so anyway, okay. Uh, so apparently this is better than white sex. Uh, I have a question. Yes. She talks about some stereotypes and she goes, the breast thing. Um, she said, there are some stereotypes are true, like the breast thing. And I sat there and I went, what the fuck is the breast thing? I think black guys are just really into titties. So I, know I, I am, like I don't think he, that's. He probably spent way too long sucking on him. <laughs> I mean, the the joke is that whatever the breasting yeah. is, it also applied to this regular white guy. Okay, so it's not too much of a stereotype. Yeah, that one threw me off. I'm like, look, I've heard a lot of stereotypes about black people, which I don't believe. Uh, but I've never heard the breast thing. But then I, it was funny when she says, but then there's other stereotypes that aren't true, like the penis thing. <laughs> I've heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, that stereotype's not true, right? <laughs> Tell everyone right now you have a small penis. Go. <laughs> Say, I'm Manny Muskets. <laughs> I'm Manny Muskets. Only have a slightly bigger than your average white guy penis. It's not huge. <laughs> Very, very modest and humble. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, and again, this is at the point where I went, wow, that girl's really hot. Who is it? I'm like, oh my God, it's Jan from the office. Nice. Um, so she invites him. Oh, by the way, she has a thing where she's just like, I don't think there's black or white, just shades of gray. And she's like, and I want to make world peace by understanding each other. So she invites Mark to her parents' house. And then we get the dinner scene. If you've wondered why we're dressed like this, it's because it is Black History Month and I wanted to honor the culture. Uh, but it's also because of this scene. So each parent has an hallucination. The mom pictures him as a criminal. Yes. Oh, I, I wrote this down. because yeah. So the mom's quote for him in yeah. her imagination is... All my life, I've only been able to think about one thing. White woman. 
and now I'll finally have one. <laughs> and I just want to say that all my life, I'm only being able to think about one thing. Actually true. <laughs> Completely true. And <laughs> then once you get one, you're still thinking about how can I get a skinny one? <laughs> I mean, why is that funny? I don't find that funny at all. I, I think that's actually offensive, really. Beauty in any size. Maybe. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so she pictures him as a criminal, yeah. and she's terrified. The son is, like, watching. I love that little tiny TV. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he's watching TV, and they're like, stop it. And so he sees the black guy, or he sees Mark, and he pictures him as a cool rock star, like Prince. And I'm sorry, I didn't want to shave and do the pencil mustache, but look, I found, I repurposed my Dr. Jacoby wig, and I... I get a prince outfit. I'm so glad I had two different costumes to combine. And he thinks he's cool. He's the one who likes him. And then the dad. Well, wait. Because with Prince, there was a weird sexual energy to how he was as yes. Prince. Like, he had to tug out. Oh, ah. He was a very <laughs> sexual man. And uh, the kid's name was Bundy Dunbar. I remember that because there's a comic from Mechanicsburg named Brandon Dunbar. <laughs> so, Do you want to dox him right now? I mean, he he does comedy under that name. He's oh, okay, never mind, never mind. I thought it was just some <laughs> random mechanic. Or, all right, he's also no, a... he's in Mechanicsburg, same place that Shane Gillis is from. <laughs> so just imagine a short Shane Gillis. <laughs> but then it was, I was... Watching it, I have to wonder, like, did that kid grow up to be gay? <laughs> or or is he just like my one friend who uh, who definitely watches a lot of sissy hypno porn? <laughs> just... <laughs> hey, I like Prince. I turned out uh, straight. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, then we get to the third hallucination, Leslie Nielsen's, and <laughs> this is... And keep in mind, this is a very racist person imagining this. Still, if I would see Thomas Hell, I would have been like, no, you know, I'm not going to take this part. Um, and what does, what, does he, what does he look like? And what does he say in that dream sequence? Um, well, he looks super cool. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, by the way, it many insisted on having a zoot suit for this, and this has been a struggle finding a goddamn suit just to reference this one scene. Yeah. But keep going. Yeah, so he, he he's he's a pimp, yeah. the coolest of all professions. <laughs> he he's got uh, Leslie's daughter pregnant. <laughs> yeah, he tells her to get his heroin needle. Yes. Who get my heroin and my hypodermic needle, bitch? And he's smoking a stogie, but I dropped mine, and I'm not. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> but I saw that, I was like, yes. <laughs> so anyone else, I feel like most black people, if I showed them this scene, they would be like, oh my god, oh no. Manny goes, oh my god, I need to get one of those suits. <laughs> mean, what can I say? I like history. One thing I will say about this scene is, as as a black guy who spent yeah. a lot of time in white environments, yeah. you are constantly imagining what each person pictures you as. Wow. So I do, I, I like the scene from that perspective because it's like, yeah, I've worried that people have that exact yeah. same fantasies about me. Yeah. Like they see me, they're like, oh, he's probably amazing at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, I just want to let you know, when I first saw you at that Philly show, I kind of assumed you might not be good at basketball. <laughs> I, I kind of pieced that one together. You know what? You might not be too good at basketball. Um, I'm not like that, though. Okay. I actually did spend a lot of... I, they're on their show. Uh, my, my friend, uh, Cop Mike. He's my dad's friend. They were cops together. A black guy. He used to take me to movies all the time as a kid and whatnot. So I'm like, think this is totally normal. How many other black friends do you have? Uh, well, there was Kira who was on the show. Kira? I don't know where she is right now. We've had uh, PK Sparks on the show. He's yeah. a good friend of mine. There's more. There's more. The fact that you started listing them was already the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Just. <a b> <laughs> 
I have I have so many black friends, Manny. How many white friends do you have, Manny? How many Italian friends do you have? I don't see race. <laughs> Damn it, that's what I should have said. <laughs> so anyway, I don't think anyone's watching the episode. I can't I can't wait until like the day after this airs. And I'm like, let's see how it's doing. And yeah, like YouTube ranks your top 10, your last 10 uploads. And it's going to be like nine out of 10. <laughs> so we can literally say whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> you guys barely talked about the movie. <laughs> so the dinner scene is done. Yes. Uh, the professor issues an assignment right before Thanksgiving because he's an asshole. He's like smiling about this. Oh, yeah. He's more evil here than he is as Darth Vader or Thulsa Doom. He's just like, yeah, before Thanksgiving. Well, you know, Mufasa's out here trying to raise kings. Raise kings. I thought you said canes. <laughs> like like raising canes? Like what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, it always comes back to picking with you. <laughs> Sorry, it was your fancy British London town accent. It threw me off. So, Raising Cades was my favorite part of Texas. <laughs> They're here now. I know. We can go get lunch there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what's his face? Uh, oh, because he went on the dinner, he missed his study date with Sarah. Yes. So he's apologizing to her, and I like, he was like, you know, something came up, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, this feels like a scene in, like, a superhero movie. Like, when Spider-Man has to, like, <laughs> explain why he didn't show up to something. I'm like, this feels like a superhero scene. C. Thomas Howell would end up being in a Spider-Man movie, the first Andrew Garfield one. Oh, nice. He's crane operator guy? Anyway. Um... I like how his instead of being a superhero, yeah. his secret was I had to get pussy. <laughs> you don't understand. You know what? That was actually more relatable to me in college, <laughs> but I never really had a good excuse. I, my excuse was always like, "What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, that girl? I don't know who she is." <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, Mark and Whitney get lunch. He's trying to break up with her. Mm -hmm. And it turns out Sarah works behind the counter. And she looks ashamed by this. And I'm like, eh, you're in college. That, I don't yeah. understand. Uh, so, yeah. And look, I, I have my note here. I said this before. I know white guys like to make jokes about black people. But literally, these are all these two guys do. Because they got more jokes. I forget what the ones in this scene are. I don't know if you wrote them down. Why do the Negro, oh, why did the Negro wear a tux on his way to the vasectomy? Wear a tux on his way. I forget the answer to this one. Uh, well, let, let's come up with some guesses. You know, let's play a little improv. Why did the Negro wear a tux on his way to the vasectomy? By the way, okay, maybe this is an 80s thing. Yeah. I don't know many white guys that use the term Negro. I don't think I've ever heard like a white guy just casually throw that word out. I'm just like, yeah, it seems a little dated. Yeah, I mean, I think it went out of style. <laughs> I think it went out of, even for, you know, even racist to have something go out of style. Yeah. But, uh, um, I, I honestly don't know. If I'm going to be impotent, I might as well look impotent. Okay, that one's bad. That one's really bad. They get worse as the movie what, goes one, on. It's not really that funny, but two, it's just like it's it's a stretch. Like, okay, the word sounds the same, and okay, yeah, no, didn't didn't work for me. Well, but let's punch it up. What would a better version? You be? know what? I think we should just keep moving on. <laughs> this is probably the end of my channel. Um, so, YouTube, Mark YouTube, I'm black. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, throw in Democrat, right? I'm also a registered Democrat. There we go. I like to say. Oh, God, I can't wait to edit this one. Uh, you're going to watch it. You're like, oh, where are all my funny jokes go? And I'm like, well, I want to stay on YouTube, Manny. Um... Rumble, rumble, rumble. <laughs> so Mark's driving and he gets pulled over by a cop. For no reason. I think it was like he 
didn't use a signal or something. I think he was doing 55 in a 54. Oh, yeah. I, by the That's way. That's a Jay-Z lyric. But. Listen, listen. <laughs> I'm sure cops might target black people more than white people, but, like, I feel like it's a universal thing. I hate when the cops ride my ass. Oh, yeah. I hate it so much. I'm just like, I'm like, why are you riding my ass? Why are you riding my ass? I know you're running my plates. Just why are you riding my ass? I always know exactly why. <laughs> and it's not because I'm black. Yeah. It's because my plates are like the paper plates. So you can see clearly that they expired two years ago. <laughs> And if there are any good lawyers in Delaware <laughs> watching this, <laughs> I need to get my license back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe you can't really relate to this scene because you were kind of in the raw. I mean, you could say the law itself is wrong, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't respect <laughs> the DMV. <laughs> so he gets pulled over. Um, and he gets thrown in jail with a bunch of guys who just lost some kind of ball game. I don't know which one it was. And they're not happy to see Mark. One, because they lost. And two, because they lost to some beautiful gentlemen of color. Uh, they don't use that word. By the way, I wasn't expecting, like, the hard R coming from a white guy. In this. I know it's the 80s, but I'm like... I mean, they'll dance around it, right? I'm like, no, that guy just threw it right the fuck out there. I mean, you... Haven't seen a lot of comedy if you haven't seen white guys dropping hard ass. I mean, I have open mic. <laughs> I mean, I have in comedy. I'm just saying, like movies, they usually try to dance around that. But <laughs> oh, nah. so they beat up Mark. Yeah. Um, and he uh, shows up late for class, all beaten and bruised. And I like that he tries to beg to the professor. He's like, I was incarcerated by bigots. And the professor's like, don't care. And he's like, I thought you of all people would uh, respect this. I'm like, I don't know. James Earl Jones seems like he was a real fucking nerd. I don't think he was really getting in trouble with the law. I don't think he went out a lot. Yeah. Um, but James Earl Jones finally gives a little bit of leeway. He's like, next time you're in jail, call me. And then he goes, I'll bring you your book so you can study. I'm like, wow, this guy's an asshole. And then he gives him one more day to finish his paper. And the only reason he's allowing it is to ruin Mark's Thanksgiving. I'm like, wow, what a fucking dick. Uh. Well, I mean, Mufasa had to play the hard ass. I mean, <laughs> the, 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 people are, have been asking why was Mufasa in this movie? Because he's obviously all pro-black and whatever. Yeah. And he, he had to represent the diligent guy who works twice as hard to yeah. get half as far. And yeah. uh, that that is a guy that you do encounter as a black youth. The guy who's like, oh, come on. Especially if you show any sign of promise. They're like, oh, you can't be out here in the streets with your do nothing friends you gotta <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> thank you Brian I saw where that was going and I'm glad you changed it <laughs> said you gotta be in them books the white people will never respect you and it's also it's like come on man <laughs> by the way by the way I'm sorry this whole episode I'm thinking usually white people are trying to like make sure they don't say anything mean <laughs> to and the whole time I'm just like Manny could you just reel it in a little bit could you not <laughs> This is like opposite day. <laughs> well, you know, I would reel it in if you would stop laughing at all the offensive jokes. So it's, it's, it's on you. It's, it's nervous laughter because I'm so offended by it. So there's a montage of him uh, trying to get better. Uh, he notices Sarah sleeping in the library and being late for school. It turns out she has a kid. And she's, like, uh, shamed by this. Um, Stereotype. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's, like, ashamed by this. And he's, like, I don't care. That's fine. Uh, then the guys show up again with more black jokes. Do you <laughs> Like, you wrote all of their jokes down. Oh. I did not write down this one. Oh! I mean... Yeah. Well, whatever it is, he uh, finally gives them a mean look. 
And they're like, oh, shit. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. You found it? How many black electricians does it take to screw in a light bulb? How many? I only wrote down the the setups. (laughs) (laughs) It was was many months ago that I saw this movie. I wrote down all the setups. I was like, it'll be fun to make Tony come up with punchlines. <laughs> oh, you dick. I thought you're not catching me with that shit. So, yeah, I'll never know. I, I think it's only one. Um, I don't know. What? They gang banged the light bulb. Who knows? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Let's move past that. Yeah. Anyway, um,. So Sarah isn't doing too well. She feels humiliated, and they finally start to study together. And even though we just got a montage, we're getting another study montage. Oh, yeah. This is the, this is the 80s. Montages were a thing. Um, turns out Sarah is living with her grandparents while she's in school because uh, her family lives back home. Um, now, these grandparents, you know, they've been around for a while. Been around a lot of black people, I assume. They look at Mark and they go, "That's clearly just a real black guy, not not clearly not a white guy who is pretending to be black at all." Um, she gives her backstory. Apparently, she got married way too young, uh, and now she has to take care of this kid. They never say like what the dad's deal is. <laughs> I mean, there's Do only you have any guesses. I mean, there's only so many stereotypes they can play with this movie. <laughs> yeah. I think they it was probably best they just left that one obscure. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, Mark realizes he never really had a girlfriend. He's only just been fooling around. And this is like a girl he actually likes now. And then she goes, wait, wow, wait, wait. snow. I've been to Boston a couple times and I've only ever been when it's snowing. I didn't enjoy it the first time, the second time, the third time. I'm not going to enjoy it if it happens again when I go up there. But she thinks it's the most amazing thing in the world. Yeah, well, this is honestly the second montage yeah it's around the point of the movie where i just got bored Stop <laughs> t- taking i i literally i literally took a note that says this movie is long as hell you know what <laughs> the funny thing is it's really not but it feels long well i also wrote down i feel like they designed it that way mm. to make us forget about some elements of the movie yeah so uh elements that I'm still waiting for something to pay off with the racist landlord. Yes. Because he hasn't showed up at all. Yeah. Um, Elaine's BF. Yeah. Like, because she or he recognized Mark, I think. Uh, a little bit later, he's he, like, sees something. Yeah. George the Ray Charles scene. Yeah. Or he was, like... That, it was clearly setting up for something, yeah. and I was like, I didn't forget, because <laughs> I've got a notepad. And also, I felt like a lot of the relationship with the white girl got edited out. Or yeah, dumped. I think that's why they threw that little scene of him dumping her. But then uh, my big thing is like, what is Gordon doing well, during all this? Gordon yeah. keeps mentioning like a woman that he's into. Yeah. Yeah. His best friend wasn't in it, like, nearly enough. Yeah, no, he, like, is in and out of this movie. Yeah, he shows up in the first scene. I'm like, oh, this guy's obviously going to be super important. Yeah. And then he does, like, nothing the whole movie. Um, But a new plot element gets introduced here. Yes. It turns out Mark took her scholarship. It turns out if no one in L.A. qualified, it would have went to her. There's a great line when okay. he just covered that. Yeah. She looks at him when the realization comes to, on his face. Yeah. And she goes, you're turning white. Look at you. <laughs> you're turning white. <laughs> Wait. That's another thing. How many of those fucking pills did he take with him? <laughs> they were experimental. I don't think, like, I know, did that stoner just give him, like, a lifetime supply? Also, what was his plan when he left college? <laughs> Because you know, I don't know if you know this, you tend to go to college to like network and stuff. I still talk to people I go to college with for like video and film stuff, and I for pretending to be a black guy and then hit them up now. <laughs> that'd be a big problem. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, then Lisa and Brad notice uh, the Mark's name on the scholarship plaque. Uh, but they don't know what the scholarship is, not till later. 
Uh, Mark thinks he's going to get grilled by James Earl Jones. And James Earl Jones is like, someone plagiarized. And we were have a council that takes care of fraud and deceivers. And he thinks like, oh, no, my number's up. He found out. And then he goes, okay, I'll do it. And James Earl Jones is like, good, you're going to be on the council. And it's like, what? It's like, yeah, we need more black representation. So it, it's pretty funny. Yeah. He, um, it was a good cause, scene. Because he was going to turn himself in. And then he get he gets promoted. I don't know why he stops turning himself in because now he's just digging himself even deeper. Um, and of course, Lisa and Brad still don't recognize him. Well, I mean, Mufasa's a scary dude. So. <laughs> you just keep calling him Mufasa. <laughs> Have you seen any other James Earl Jones movie? I love. Lion King. I forgot what the <laughs> Mufasa movie was for a second. Let's call it the Mufasa movie. <laughs> okay. Mufasa's my favorite. I like when they say Hakuna Matata. Who knows what that <laughs> no, means? No, no. I know. I know that you like saying Hakuna Matata. Let's just move past that. Sign up for the Dick Show or WTV Patreon to get that joke. Philly, uh, Philly Road Rage 2 WTV crossover. God, I can't believe. I just remember getting on stage after you going, I'm not Tony from Hack the Movies. I've never been here before. It means no worries. <laughs> yes, that's all it means. It literally means nothing else. Anyway. Um, <laughs> you should watch Conan the Barbarian. James Earl Jones is a good bad guy in Conan the Barbarian. Okay. I'm, I I don't like 80s movies, all this old shit. I, I don't understand people who do like 80s movies. Well, thank you for being on my show. Uh, <laughs> I love Kill Tony. And <laughs> no, I'm people. not Kill Tony. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> he goes home and Whitney is waiting for him in his room. And she really wants to sleep with him to save the world. Uh, but then we get wacky shenanigans, the classic sitcom thing where people are trying to keep other people away. This was done in an old movie, and Season of Californication did this. A lot of people have done this element. Mike's parents show, or no, Mark's parents show up to the college. They really want to see their boy. Yeah. So he tricks them by putting a ski mask on, saying he's sick. The shysty. <sighs> yes. And he shoes them away into a kitchen. So he's got white lady, half naked. And which, by the way, Gordon allowed all of this. Gordon's on the golden rule. He's like, well, I wouldn't want you to stop a white woman, a <laughs> naked lady from being in my bed. Um, so he's got parents in the kitchen, white lady there. And then, what do you know? Sarah shows up to study. And now he's like, oh, fuck. Now I got to keep them all separated. It's like a whole thing. Uh, I will say... Um, Hold on. Uh, oh, yeah. So Whitney puts on the music. Uh, Sarah ends up seeing it. Uh, I do love when um, he goes back in to talk to his parents and he's not wearing the mask. And they're like, oh, my God. It's a black man. <laughs> it's a black man who looks a lot like our son and is wearing the same clothes. <laughs> that, that was the one thing I wrote down was, like, I can believe... The other students not recognizing mm. that he's a white guy. I can believe his friends or the other black people not recognizing he's a black. But your own parents? Yeah, that was true. I, that poor of a disguise would never fool me. So, uh, eventually... <laughs> what? I was going to say, why don't you use that shoe polish and see if I can tell a difference? <laughs> I can't believe you did the shoe polish <laughs> Take this with you. I don't want people asking like why I have shoe polish on the set. Like, oh, no reason. Show off my shoes a lot. So, yeah, his parents didn't recognize him. Uh, Gordon has to, like, distract Whitney. And then Mark comes in and, like, throws her out of the, <laughs> throws her out of the apartment onto the fire escape where the landlord sees it. Uh, and right away, he calls Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. What's the, okay. I can't tell white people apart. Okay. So I was like, is the landlord that girl's dad? <laughs> okay, so so like, maybe he's not the landlord. I mean, he, so he's the guy who runs the property. Okay. Leslie Nielsen owns the building. Oh. And she's Leslie Nielsen's daughter. So uh, the landlord sees this. 
Uh, I like when um, Sarah, this actually really cracked me up, when Sarah goes, is there somebody in the kitchen? And he goes, no, and then the parents, like, pop their head out. Is there someone in the kitchen? Is somebody in the kitchen? No. Uh, and they're like, there he is again, that black man. Um, Gordon uh, tries to help Mark with a lie, and he's like, these people are crazy. They're trying to adopt this man. <laughs> They're like, get out. Uh, it's it's all falling apart. Oh, man. Uh, what you call it? And then Mark uh, talks to Sarah, and Whitney interrupts. Mark starts to lose the plot, and he finally he tells his parents, Mom, Dad. There's something I have to tell you. I'm black. <laughs> Sarah runs off. I remember when I came out to my parents. <laughs> oh, really? As a black man? <laughs> yeah. How'd they take it? <laughs> Not well. <laughs> I'm shocked they didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an old Wanda Sykes joke, I think, but it still worked even in the 80s. <laughs> you know, you know. So Sarah runs off, Leslie Nielsen punches Mark, and the boys get evicted, which is a shame. Uh, they take their exam. Sarah still won't talk to him. So, and Roger Ebert actually pointed this out. Like, She's not as mad as she should be at the end of this movie. Yeah. Because it's like, he didn't just lie. It's like, he pretended to be black. Like, that's that's a pretty bad one. Yeah. And he took your scholarship. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't even be, they weren't assigned, I don't remember assigned seats in college, so I wouldn't have sat anywhere near him if I was her. Um. So yeah, now some time has passed. Wait, oh. but I think... I don't know if this is when he loses the plot with everyone in his oh, yeah, house yeah, yeah. at once at the sitcom. Yeah, scene, we can go back, yeah. Or if it's later. But at one point, he has the line, now a part of me is black on the inside. But now a part of me is black on the inside. That's where the movie lost me. <laughs> That's where it lost you? Yeah. I was like, come on. I kind of got lost after the introduction of the blackface, <laughs> but I'm glad you made it that far into the movie. <laughs> You had one bad day. <laughs> you could stop taking these pills at any moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, there's going to be a hearing about what to be done. What's going to be done about Mark? I like that Whitney is now dating a Native American, yeah. and she does her same lines like there is no red or white. Which, by the way, I don't think Native Americans really like being called red. I don't think you really should say that. But she's like red or white, just shades of pink this time. I mean, it's, it's, it's white women, you know they they think that they're more woke than they are. Yo, yeah, I know. I know a lot of liberal girls like now. And I remember them from my like college and high school. And I'm like, <laughs> I remember shit that you used to say back then. <laughs> Honestly, that bitch was the most believable character yes. in the movie. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Um, okay. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's a we hearing. We can say bitch in here, right? Huh? We can say bitch, right? You can say bitch. <laughs> <laughs> We went like a hundred or something episodes <laughs> without any get, getting anywhere near close to the N word. And then here we are. You've said it like 15 times. Oh, <sighs> I only say it when I'm doing comedy. Am I going to, can I get a pass or? I mean, passes are a myth. You, you want to <laughs> say it, you can say it. <laughs> I'm not going to beat you up. You know, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. We're going to keep going here. Um, so Gordon, this is counsel. Finally uh, becomes useful. He finally becomes useful. He does this whole speech about how we shouldn't be mad at Gordon because of the color of his skin. Yes. <laughs> I do like the people there are like trying to figure out like why there's this hearing. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, he finally reveals. Himself. I do like the timing of this. Uh, because Brad was looking up what the Bouchard scholarship was because they knew he didn't have enough money and now suddenly he's there. 
So I like that Mark comes in, reveals himself as a white guy, and then Brad comes in right after. He goes, Mark, whatever is a white man. And he goes, oh, I guess they already figured it yeah. out. <laughs> Dollar short and a day late. <laughs> <laughs> Was Brad trying to get into Harvard? Like, was yeah, he on the wait list? I think, yes. I think that was the problem. He was, like, really trying to get in. Um, so, yeah, he... Uh... He had to kick a black man out to get his <laughs> spot. So he tells James Earl Jones, I'm sorry, Mufasa, the professor, he tells him that uh, he plans to give everything back, uh, including, like, to, he wants everything to go to Sarah and he'll pay interest on it, uh, and he'll accept whatever punishment he deserves... Uh, as long as he can remain in Harvard. And then James Earl Jones goes, you've learned what it's like to be black. But then Mark admits, he's like, no, I didn't. Because I could have I could have stopped at any time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why they had to ruin a good movie with their woke nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wokeness was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Manny, you might be the only person on earth, except for maybe in the 80s, who would consider this movie woke. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the professor uh, is impressed by him, even though in real life, the professor would be like, you're out of here. Oh, my God. I'm going to like the dean. You're gone. Get the fuck out of here. Um, Mark apologizes to Sarah directly. And I do like that her son is just like, you look weird white. I'm like, no, kid, he looked weird black, but okay. Uh, he apologized to her directly. Uh, Sarah is mad at him. Uh, but then she gets an A and she feels happy. Yep. And I'm like, Sarah, no, I'd still be really angry at this guy. Uh, but then he's like, how do you feel about interracial relationships? And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I... Well, one, she seems pretty light-skinned. Her dad's Tommy Chong in real life. I'm like, I think she's fine within her... It's the fact that you lied to her and did blackface. That's... The interracial part isn't that big of a deal. But then but then the movie's like, well, I've never thought about white men before. I'm like, no, god damn it. That's not the point. Uh, but she turns them down. Then the guys make racist jokes again. Yeah. Um, did you write this one down? I did. This one was not good. I said that they got worse as they go along. Yes. What do you call a black test tube baby? What do you call a black test tube baby? I think it was a janitor in a can or something. Oh. I, or, a, yeah, a janitor's drum. I don't know. It was bad. What would you call a black test tube baby? It's a, a, a beautiful person of color, the next president. <laughs> Uh, Stop trying to catch me with this. I'm not answering these. Let's, let's see. Uh, I love that the, you're trying to make a better racist. Yeah, I, I, I go with the next MVP of the Super Bowl. Is that a stereotype? I don't think so. Uh, the, the, something about. Making him a super athlete. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, the <laughs> setup doesn't really lead to a lot of good punchlines, so. It's it's fine. Patreon.com okay. slash the man pad. I do spend time <laughs> trying to punch up Patrick Michaels jokes. Uh, so. if, as, if you don't know, Patrick Michael is a great entertainer, one of the best podcasts of our generation, and Manny I, is honored to do a show with him. You should all subscribe to the man pad. I'm learning a lot by working with him. Yes, yes. Uh, I, a few years from now, who knows where your comedy career will be uh, because of him. Um, okay, so he assaults them violently, which would definitely get him expelled. Well, two things about that. Yeah. I wrote down that they took it surprisingly well after being assaulted. Yeah. And also... The whole point of the movie is he's finally learned what it means to be black. Yes. And then he immediately resorts to violence. Yes, and I have it here. Sarah, for some reason, is attracted to this display of violence, and I don't know if that's the best message at the end of the film. I feel like that might have uh, led to some... I feel like that might be a different stereotype that this film was trying to avoid. Yeah, women are stupid. <laughs> They're emotional creatures without logic. 
So that's Soul Man. <laughs> Steve Miner's Soul Man. Manny. Uh, yeah, for a movie named Soul Man, yeah. I would have thought it had a better soundtrack. Yeah, a lot of like early blues, and then there's Beach Boys at one point. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. not a lot of soul. Yeah. Also, when you first told me the movie we were watching. You thought it was the Bernie Mac one? Yeah, I thought it was going to be Bernie Mac and yeah. Samuel L. Jackson. Nah. Oh, God, I remember when the, the preview for that came out. It was after Bernie Mac died. Yeah. And I remember, like, everyone, like, Bernie Mac showed up on the screen in the theater, and everyone went, oh. And then, like, they cut to, like, Isaac Hayes, who had also recently died, and the theater went, oh, like, it's two times <laughs> in the same trailer. Uh, I thought you were going to say, Tony, are we watching Dan Aykroyd's short-lived sitcom? What was that? Soul Man. He was a preacher who helped people solve their problems. Oh, yeah. I did hear about that. I used to watch that when it aired. It didn't last long. Well, I... Dad Aykroyd was never understood. I got a lot of opinions of Dan Aykroyd. Makes a hell of a vodka. Uh, yeah. But anyway, that's Soul Man. Look, this movie, uh, <laughs> uh, I get what it was trying to do. It's it's trying to say something about race. It's not doing it well. The problem is the special effect to make him black. It's just... It's not convincing. That was special effects? <laughs> yeah. Makeup effects and whatnot. Oh, okay. We recently talked about this with Mrs. Doubtfire, where for me, I'm like, it just looks like Robin Williams in a wig to me. Uh, that's, But at least in that one, it maybe it's somewhat convincing. Yeah. Old ladies kind of start to look at dude, like dudes at some point. Um, but in this one, it's just like, I can't buy that every... I can't suspend my disbelief enough that every character is dumb enough to think that he's a real black guy. Well, I think I mentioned it before, but I could never get past his lips. The whole, yeah. The whole movie. Yeah. They, I, I think not doing anything with the lips was more racist than... <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> Wait, were his like, palms and whatnot black too? Or am I thinking of Justin Trudeau who did that? <laughs> I wasn't paying enough attention. <laughs> Dude, but, I mean, on my palms? <laughs> no, no, but that's why I, th I think at one point it showed like they were, and I'm like, that's not how that works. Oh, uh, maybe. <sighs> anyway, that was Soul Man. Uh, Manny, thank you so much for being on probably the last episode of this show. Uh <laughs> Definitely the funniest. <laughs> But Manny, thank you for being on the most heavily edited episode of this show. Rumble. <laughs> you know, I put the episodes up early on Patreon. Maybe I'm not going to say I'm doing it, but maybe the Patreon version of this will be a little bit spicier than the final version. I don't know who you're making this promise to, because if they're seeing this on Patreon, you already made your choice. Well, it's a note for future episodes that maybe the Patreon versions will be a little bit different. Maybe I'll maybe I'll be like, you know what? Let me cut that out for the main release. But if you're a patron, you get to see it. So you know how uh, all the DC fans were like, we want the Snyder cut. Yeah. If you're watching, God this damn on it! YouTube, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's not funny when they already see the punchline coming. <laughs> I've been Manny Muskets, uh, Instagram.com slash Manny Muskets, Twitter.com slash Manny Muskets. Hey, it's, it's called X now. You know what? I'm <laughs> fine with calling it X because every time I look at that app, I'm checking on my X. <laughs> Patreon.com slash The Man Pad. <laughs> Check it all out. And I hope you're all having a. I hope you still somehow manage to have a great Black History Month after this episode. <laughs> Goodbye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talking, talking about tapes. <laughs>